Hello, and welcome to my Xbox and me, episode 455, if I didn't get my numbers wrong. I am one of your hosts, MC Fixer, alongside the one and only Mr. Paul Deespawn. How are you? Hello there. I am good. How are you? I'm not bad, mate. I'm not bad. A little tired, a little bit, a little bit raspy, a little bit sick, unfortunately. Hence why I missed this week's Baldur's Gate session, which I'm upset about. Um, and of course, the one and only Mr. Matt P video rejoining us as well. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Hello, everybody. Uh, where's weekend. Crash? Where's Crash? He's dead. No, nah, it's not Crash his dead. fault. He doesn't even know. To be fair to Crash, he doesn't even know where we're recording right now. Mm. That's how it's gone. That's, That's how fair. messed up our week has been. So no, no blames this week. No, no complaining this week. But Crash, Crash couldn't be with us. We are sorry. We are sorry. Uh, you know, this is he's a. <laughs> we gotta stop that bit. Oh, I no, wish I never started never. that bit. I yeah. wish we gotta stop it. I feel so bad. Um, if you didn't know, this is my Xbox and me, our Xbox podcast right here on youtube.com slash my Xbox and me and all podcast services. If you want to support the show, head over to patreon.com slash MC Fixer. I really do have to employ you to do so. We've been doing this show now for a really, really long time. Um, I've been doing this show for a really long time. I've always tried my hardest to keep it ad free. I've always tried to make it a passion project. I've always made it something I love doing. And I do. That hasn't changed here. Um, but unfortunately, times are hard for everyone. That includes podcasters. And now we do need financial support. I wouldn't say it like this otherwise. If you enjoy this show, please do consider supporting on patreon.com slash mcfixer. Or if you're not a Patreon person and you prefer Twitch, twitch.tv slash mcfixer. We've got a donation button and we've got subs. Or if you want YouTube members, wherever you want to support, there are positions to support. Go and do so. Yeah, I don't, I even, I don't talk to the boys about it or anything like that. But yeah, we are... It's a hard life right now as a content creator. Full-time content creating is, is a challenge. And my Xbox and me has been a passion project, obviously, that I've done now for eight years plus, which is crazy. Um... But now is the first time I'm actually at a point where I'm like, yeah, we have to start. If we want this to grow and to continue and to keep enjoying the content we make, we have to start putting more into it. So please, please do consider going to support if you enjoy the show every week. Um, let's not forget, 12-hour stream is happening on the 12th of April. Make sure you book some time off work. I saw Yami post in the Discord the other day saying that he's booked it off. Do not forget, 12 hours of game shenanigans with myself, Matt, despawn and crash so that should be a good time uh topic of the show this week we have got what did we decide i don't i haven't got it in front of me dragon's dogma 2 controversy <laughs> thank you dragon dogma 2 a little video game that's come out guys capcom don't miss right capcom don't miss well capcom right? don't miss currently sat at an 86 on metacritic 86 that's very good that's a that's very, that's very, a very good. good video game 62 reviews as well so a lot of reviews in there and it's netted out at 86 is very impressive quick so, question how's it doing yes, on steam probably. what are the steam reviews like oh yeah oh. let's go let's go oh, let's go oh, 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 oh. that was mean that was mean and that you know mean. it uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah this is this is a weird multi-layered conversation to have really right because mm -hmm. you've got dragon dogma 2 very good game uh critically a very good game obviously I'm getting eight nines, a few tens here and there uh, across the board. Capcom, once again, a beloved um, publisher who has had a near perfect track record as of lately. As of lately, other, yeah, than, yeah. other than other than that one game, we don't talk about that one though. Do we despawn mm. Exo Primal? I love Exo, Exo Primal. Primal. <laughs> Those two weeks I've been playing it were fantastic. <laughs> um but yeah obviously it is it is in its uh its own controversy um strangely weirdly and dumbly in my opinion but we'll get into that very very soon um matt talk to me what the hell is going on with dragon's dogma they start first of all you played the game so they start off i played what do you think of dragon dogma 2 i'm about 10 hours into dragon's dogma 2 um i was very unfamiliar with the first game like, other than seeing the trailers for Dragon's... And I think they've done a great job at marketing Dragon's Dogma. In everything they've shown, it looks like a hell of a lot of fun. It looks like, you know, proper power fantasy trip. Awesome. Um, and every time I see more videos for the game, I go like, man, I want to get there. Man, that looks like a lot of fun. But the first 10 hours of this game, to where I am, is rough going. Okay. And I am not having a whole lot of fun. Um... It, it's it's slow like it starts you off 
with the the ability to sort of switch between four classes it, it, so you pick a class and then you have to go like a couple of hours into the game and then you're basically allowed to switch classes kind of whenever you want it's kind of complicated but the those starting classes are not particularly fun to play um i think like especially the mage is like so dull there's no lock on and so like you're trying to fire spells at stuff flying around and you, god knows if you're gonna hit them and it's just really unfun um but i can see and i think this game will click for me after 15 20 hours when i start unlocking some new vocations and classes and start getting into it because i've seen what's to come i've seen the videos i've seen the stuff that i want to try out fighting these big monsters and stuff it's just it is a slog to get there interesting um, yeah I, i've got the game i haven't played it yet uh you're planning on getting it soon uh right this one literally as soon as we finish playing uh playing um recording today i'm gonna pick it up and uh, put some time into it fair enough fair I, enough uh yeah no sorry so what i was gonna say is i think like you know I, I talk a lot about one of my favorite games of all time being fallout 3 and if fallout 3 came out now i don't think it would be because fallout 3 came out when i was 14 and i had a summer and no responsibilities and all i did was play fallout 3 yeah. i think dragon's dogma could be that for some people right like if you've got the time to invest in it and like get lost in it and you know really sort of envelop yourself in it i think there's something there for you now i've heard a lot of people saying like the story is nonsense which it kind of is like um yeah it, some of its mechanics are overly complicated i think so like there are stealth missions in the game but no stealth mechanics so somebody will tell you like hey you need to sneak into this place uh, yeah and the, you can just walk straight past guards and maybe if you try and enter a door you're not supposed to enter they'll go hey don't do that and that's as far as the stealth mechanics go. Right. And it, like, it's like all things like that, where it's like, oh, this game just feels a bit janky, feels a bit dated. But I could totally see the combat's a lot of fun. Like I could totally see a lot of people getting really invested in it um, and really enjoying it. Hence the reviews, right? Like you can't argue with those review scores. Um, but for me, it's a slow start. It's a, a slow build and burn. And playing on Xbox does not run great. Uh, frame rate issues and stuff like that um not in combat to be fair mostly when you're just running around town trying to talk to people but and nothing game breaking but frame rate dips for sure they've yeah. they mentioned they're going to be working on that so buyer beware i would say okay it's a single player game you could wait for a sale do you know what i mean like i could see that coming in the sort of next six months if you wanted but yeah yeah do okay, you think buddy yeah okay yeah, i'll wait yeah sure well, that's not how i work um do you think this is an issue with the fact that it's the re engine which was typically designed for a very linear experience and this is now like an open world game maybe yeah i get like it could be that you know i i don't i won't pretend to really understand how games work or is or issues that they have on pc or whatever right but reading about the sort of CPU usage that is like being hammered by Dragon's Dogma when you go into cities and stuff, mm. it, they Capcom have come out and said like, oh, that's because we're loading in a bunch of NPCs and then they have to load their physics for how they're interacting with the world. And it's kind of like emergent in a sense that like, you know, NPCs can bump into each other just because they're walking around or, you know, th these things can kind of happen um, off the cuff, I guess. Like there, there is a certain amount of chaos to the world. Um, and so, like, when you go into these tightly, densely packed areas with NPC, that's that's where it's causing issues for you. Um, and so, yeah, I guess. I mean, maybe they'll fix it. They'll pack, they surely can be able to patch it. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. when you when you're talking about a Resident Evil game, what's the most amount of NPCs you're dealing with at any one time? Six, seven, eight, maybe. Um, I would just not zombies scale, on the screen. Right? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. right. yeah, yeah. It's just not the same scale. So yeah, maybe that's the issue. But. Um, but there's a lot of good Capcom juice in you, right? Like you can see the Monster Hunter influence when you're fighting these big beasties and toppling them, and and it, you know when it when it when it works and it's doing what it's doing, it's great. Um, but like you you start the game very underpowered, very under, like you will get your shit kicked in if you're out at night, um, and all of these things that that some people will love i'm sure they'll love the depth they'll love the challenge and the strategy and the stuff um but there's like no difficulty settings you know famously you can't have multiple saves um or multiple characters apparently they're gonna add so that. okay okay no, that's the, we're getting to that portion of um sure, drama sure, sure. drama the again i'm seeing a lot i'm seeing a lot going around on the internet right now i guess i guess that's the perfect place to start before we get onto microtransactions right What's going on with things like that? I'm, I'm, I again. I haven't started the game yet. 
So I'm only seeing what I'm picking up off of TikTok, Twitter, and things like that. And what I have seen is you have to pay to customize your character. You have to pay for fast travel. You have to pay to... You can't start another character. Where are you with this? Because it seems like there's a part truth to this, but there's also a bunch of bullshit going on right now on the internet. So talk to me, Matt. What's what's going on? So I think, you know? I think <laughs> the saves thing, the like yeah. multiple saves, multiple characters is a bit separate, right? So like they came out very early on, well, not very early on, but like certainly pre-release and said, hey, there is one save. It's auto save. As soon as you make a decision, that decision is locked. You yeah. can't save scum. You can't go back and you can't make multiple characters. I th- personally, I feel like that is an odd choice to make in a role-playing game. Like, but would Baldur's Gate have done as well if they were like, nope, no multiple characters. Mm-hmm. Like, you're just you're one playthrough, that's your playthrough, and when you finish yeah. that, you can start another one if you want. Um, probably not, right? Like, I think there's so many people I know who have played through the first act of Baldur's Gate several times and never got yep. any further, because then they're like, oh, now I want to try this class. Now I want to mm-hmm. try this class. Um, look, they're different games, but, uh, you know, I think I think it's needlessly damaging to the game to not have multiple saves i don't know how you guys feel about it does that turn you off or do you quite like that idea of some permadeath sort of experience you know so i'm i'm kind of 50 50 i like the idea of like in a role-playing game like single player kind of experience like your choices matter and what you decide is that that character's playthrough. What I don't like is the idea that you can't roll a second character and do a different choice. Mm. Like, like the fact that it is locked to like your entire gameplay with this game is like one character, one choice. Whatever you decide is that, and that's it. Like, it doesn't give you the scope to try different things, especially with it being a single player. So, like, you're not affecting anybody else's yeah. playthrough. Um, yeah. I think I feel like locking that option out is a bit detrimental to me personally like sure. I, I like that like you i like to say like with the dragon uh, with the Baldur's gate thing uh, i like having the option to go like okay so i've done it this way what if i did it a different way yeah. what if i like saved it at this point and then choose like my path and i go all right cool i like this let me try it a different way and see what happens this way maybe if i kill every npc in the town it'll be cool and it'll be funny and it'll be hilarious maybe if i befriend a certain person it'll be great maybe what happens when i choose this like layout of pawns that i want to run with like yeah. having i think the good thing about rpgs is that they give you that choice and it seems like this mm. is locking off that a little bit which yeah. is kind of like turning me off a little do you know what it is for me i i have two two different opinions on this right I have the I have the MC Fixer opinion and I have the Corey Spearman opinion on this. And let me explain the two, right? So MC Fixer, um, privileged position, gets code for game, right? And has only got time for one playthrough. So for me, yeah, this is perfect. One playthrough, every decision matters. You know, um, I'm going to play this, like you said, permadeath, those type of things. And And that's typically how i play games Mm -hmm. i don't really have time to play multiple playthroughs of games unless i really love the game um you know boulder's gate we're doing and that's been my third time playing through that um resident evil things like that so so there's there's that part of it where i'm like this doesn't really affect me so it doesn't bother me as such in terms of this is how i would play the game anyway yeah but the other side of it being like me, Corey, is like, well, yeah, it, it does seem like a very strange decision, especially for a single player game, right? Like, let's say hypothetically, again, this is a seventy pound, seventy dollar game, sixty pound game, whatever it may be, right? Um, yeah, you should be able to have the option to have multiple different characters and play through it multiple different times in different variations of how you want to do so, especially in a role playing game like this. It does seem it does seem very 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 strange on Capcom, but also being a Capcom fan, I know from Resident Evil, right? I know how they design games. So Resident Evil is very similar. Like I know it's not an RPG, obviously, and it's a more linear experience, but they like you to play through a game and then go through it again and experience it again, but from the start. That's how Capcom have always. Yeah, I I found Devil May Cry obviously not not Devil May Cry very different. Again, I don't I don't know if I'm explaining it properly, but it's like Resident Evil um, Four or Village, right? Mm-hmm. Like you play through those games, and New Game Plus is 
play through the game again on your save that you've already completed yeah. um, to, to experience that, which you learned obviously with Village because you didn't know that. Um, <laughs> when he's like, where's New Game Plus? So it's, it, it does feel very much like a Capcom thing to do, unfortunately. And that's a good thing in some aspects and obviously it's a bad thing in others. I think in this game specifically, it's a bad thing. I think Capcom have got this wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, they have sucks. come out and they've said they're going to add the ability to to start a new game as a second character um, yeah but you still they, they i don't think from my understanding they're not going to add the ability to sort of have manual saves that you can go no. back to that you can that's save fine. so you're Which, just i'm perfectly good with that personally i think so i think so i think that's fine you know yeah. it's, it's in, at that point i guess that is like an artistic decision um the thing i like about in boulders gate though is sometimes because the world is so um chaotic stuff can break mm-hmm. like the the first time in my personal Baldur's gate game i went to the goblin camp to try and save halcyn um he was just aggroed on my whole team for no like it, it's clearly a bug yeah um and i was like okay well i can just reload this save and that and it fixed it yeah and then i had halcyn in my team um and so like it's those things that i would worry about with a game i haven't run into anything like that um but it's those things that i would worry about with with sort of dragon's dogma and there is like a mechanic in the game that i guess would negate that kind of stuff whereby you can uh any npc that dies in the game you can resurrect oh, um, interesting. and you can do it at, at as far as i'm aware I haven't like gone deep enough to figure this out, but I, I guess you could do it at any time. Like it says, when an NPC dies, either you can res- if you see it, you can resurrect them there and then if you've got a certain material. If you don't, some and I haven't seen this, but it says somebody will come and collect that body and take it to the morgue in the capital city, ah, and then okay. you go to the morgue in the capital city, and there's fucking bodies everywhere, and you talk to the guy, and you're like, oh yeah, I want, I want that, that one, one over I there. Want it. <laughs> go revive him, and then, and then it happens. So it's kind of a cool mechanic because I, I was remembering um, in Fallout Three, like one of the main early quest givers, um, had, had died somehow, like got outside of Megaton and died, and like I could not figure out what I was supposed to do, and da da da, and it just kind of like broke that quest line for me. Um, so those things Sounds happen. Sounds like giant... Bethesda. Well, yeah, <laughs> but these things happen in these giant open world RPGs. Yeah. It's part of the love of them, right? And so, hundred yeah, no, percent. Um, I understand why people would want saves to to kind of figure that stuff out, but doesn't sound like it's coming. Yeah. Uh, the other then, half of the controversy. Gonna... <laughs> yeah, please, please, please. Um, is the microtransactions so? These were detailed in the reviewer's guides, um, but as far as I'm aware, nobody got early codes, got, you know, there was no, like, pre-ordered deluxe edition that you get because you're a reviewer and it gives you all of these resources that we're going to charge money uh, to people for, and then... Which, just literally just to add on to that to the audience, is that happens quite often. Yes. Uh, uh, I would say literally 99.9% of aim codes that are sent to either me or my xbox and me as a crew or us individually we always literally 99 percent of the time we get deluxe editions of the game mm-hmm. um that include premium currency a lot of times premium currency yeah. and skins and things like that and yeah i mean it's not it's weird when you think about that as an industry we don't really think i don't think i add that in the review of like oh yeah i got the yeah. deluxe edition it's just like i got the game yeah <laughs> the reason i bring one. it up yeah. sorry go on paul i'm gonna say because with the a recent example was the like a dragon infinite wealth like it, that's, there was a yeah. there was a big kickoff ra- mm-hmm. around uh obviously new game, new plus. game plus and for me i didn't even figure that was an issue because it was just an option yeah for me because i got the deluxe edition so i was like oh what, what's everyone complaining about yeah They're like oh okay now i see yeah yeah but no so it's like yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, yeah. Like it's, it's the, we've talked about it before, like that kind of weird, not a disconnect, but like we are in some kind of a privileged position where sometimes Absolutely. We, don't, we don't see the issues that um, people that are purchasing the game. Like I'm going to see the issues that people purchasing the game of Dragon's Dogma get because I'm going to pick it up to, after this stream. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. No, no, 100%. And I think it's something that can definitely be lost in, again, we're, we're the first set of influencers slash game enthusiasts press slash reviewers things like that right this is something that's obviously going to continue now forever but um people who've been doing this like for 10 years now we forget sometimes you forget about that the longer it goes on like i know Mm -hmm. i'll speak for myself right like i've been doing this a long time like when i get a copy of the game look who we have here everybody it's the one and only 
<laughs> an impromptu podcast guest breaking the stream that's fine don't worry about that i will start it is fine crash how are so you my good. friend i'm doing good we just want we're just talking about dragon's dogma we're talking about yeah. the uh, micro transactions and things like that so we'll get your opinion on a let me finish my thought process but yeah it's it is an interesting one right in terms of we we do forget that privilege that the deluxe edition comes through like you said infinite wealth is definitely the one for me where i was like oh yeah um i don't i forgot about this and yeah as time goes on you really do forget about having to clarify those things to the audience for sure. so yeah no it's definitely it's definitely interesting but so, matt yeah go to be clear so we make it you know i work for the future game show and so we do not do? review games i do uh, we do not review games um, and we make that very clear when we reach out for codes and stuff so we say we might do guides we might do editorial content tiktoks this sort of stuff we're not going to put a score to your game and so sometimes what that means is we do get diff we get it to the game later than reviewers would we get slightly different packaging so i don't know for sure that this is the case but i don't think reviewers got super duper deluxe editions that came with a bunch of these resources that capcom no, are now I charging agree. for um what i think is they got the the standard game everybody else got and a lot of reviewers i guess didn't find issue i i believe that the microtransactions were detailed in the reviewer's guide mm -hmm. yeah and sure. i have not seen that so yeah. i can't confirm but i have heard that's the case so reviewers were aware that capcom would be charging for this thing and you know the, these resources that allow you to fast travel resources that allow you to change the the look of your character and stuff you can find them in the game they are scarce resources of you, course you know they fluctuate but they are scarce resources there's a certain amount of randomness to some of them um or if you want you can buy them as microtransactions and that's where the the brouhaha is um i believe like i say reviewers were told about that and it clearly hasn't affected the review scores you know sat at, as we've said sat at 86 on metacritic um and so yeah it's a really interesting one capcom have come out they've listed now publicly all of the things that you can buy and and kind of you know how you can also find them in game and it doesn't seem like they're going to u-turn um and turn off that that ability to to buy those things through microtransactions and i'd say probably the one that will affect people most certainly on in the early game is the fast travel uh, resource that is very scarce and uh, very useful because the the alternative is um is fast travel in a, in a sense that you buy a ticket to ride on a cart yeah um, and there's quite a high likelihood that that cart might get attacked and if you're early on in the game the thing that is attacking that cart probably will kill you <laughs> yeah. um and it'll probably be nighttime when it happens and so not only will that thing attack you 40 goblins will poke out of a bush and in the middle of nowhere and also kill you um so i mean that sounds like a fantastic gameplay experience to me i'm not gonna <laughs> I, lie to me, like i get it right that's that's part of the chaos of this world and that's part mm. of the thing that people will love about this game i also understand why that might feel frustrating to some people and i understand why that might feel predatory to some people when the way to avoid that nuisance is to pay potentially for mm. the privilege of not <laughs> riding on an ox cart like a peasant yeah <laughs> the one thing i would say this isn't new for capcom uh -oh. thank you very much d like, spawn i was i was there so i'm glad you've said it resident evil had it yep they've done it resident before. evil sold a key mm -hmm. that unlocked every single gun in the game um which you only did if you had beaten the spe speedruns will know this if you beat the game under a certain amount of time you unlock things in the game and that's yeah, what yeah. happens two hours but they sold yeah. yeah something like that i remember i bought it i ended up buying that key but i bought it when it went on sale it went on sale mm -hmm. for like two pounds and i was like yeah. yep i'll take that because <laughs> uh, i can't i didn't have the ability to speed run it as quick as i and i wanted everything um yeah, this definitely isn't new for Capcom at all in a single... I saw the, the brouhaha, obviously, on Twitter is very much, it's a single-player game. How dare? There's like, well, they've been doing this. This mm -hmm. isn't new. Yeah. This, is, this is something yeah, that they have done. This, now, what... Go on, please, Crash. I was going to say, this isn't even just Capcom. A bunch of games, you get pre-order bonuses. They end up selling those pre-order bonuses. A lot of the times, the pre-order bonuses are just like, here's a bunch of extra potions and stuff like that that they yeah. end up selling for like 299 or whatever the case Assassin's is. Assassin's Creed does it, right? Like a lot of yep. like XP boosts and like things like that to help you unlock stuff. I would, like that and, point is, yeah, yeah. I, I would argue that Assassin's Creed system is more egregious than this game, if I'm going to be honest. 
easier lock behind story <laughs> content through levels. Yeah, yeah, Fakes. whatever you say, Fakes. Crash. Get out of here. Whatever you say, mate, yeah? <laughs> Get out of Miss Ubisoft. I- <laughs> <laughs> no jokes aside. Um, I, I think Assassin's Creed definitely started it. Mm-hmm. I will say that I remember. Did they? When, I think, yeah, because we had I think, we had a remember, conversation for Odyssey when they yeah. did it. I think was it Odyssey? I think it was, it was Odyssey or Origin. It might have been Origin. I remember us having. I think it might have been Origins. I remember us having the conversation though. It was a yeah. big thing. Um, well, again, um, I think this to 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 bring it back to Dragon's Dogma Two, right? This comes down to this is aimed at people who do not have time, right? And it, yes, do I think it is a little bit. Uh, predatory yes but nobody is forcing you to reach into your wallet and to buy this it is a choice it is an option do i think it should exist do you know what yeah i do i do think i do think it should exist i don't think it needs to be I don't think it needs, as long as it isn't pushed in my face, I haven't started Dragon's Dogma 2 yet, right? So I don't know. And Capcom have been, from what I've experienced with Resident Evil, with the unlock systems for what I've got, it was never in your face. Um, even well, down to the new Resident Evil game. I didn't know it was a thing until the brouhaha. So there you go. So, so perfect. So I mean, don't I get me I'm, wrong. I wish I had more fucking resources to fast travel, but yeah, I didn't know I could buy those. Well, things. I'm, I'm yeah, pretty so. sure the thing you can buy in. If I'm not mistaken, you can only buy them once, so it's not like repeat purchases of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, is to set up a te- fast travel point, and not even the fast travel itself, because you still need a currency to fast travel. And yes. I don't think you can buy those, and I might be wrong about that. Uh, I don't what? know. I, I wasn't I'm aware looking... that you could set up custom fast map travel points, but yeah, I'm looking at it at the moment. You can uh, well, you can uh, set up a warp location marker. Uh, which you can then use the ferry stone to instantly transport your party to that location. Oh, interesting. But you um, need an item to actually like, do the fast travel. You might be able to buy yeah. a couple of ferry stones. It might be like three or something like I, that. I think I think as well, it kind of goes back to this like artistic choice almost of what we were talking about with the saves and the multiple characters of of going... Part of the 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 vision for this game is you. it's tough, you're going to struggle, and you need to be prepared. Like... If you're going on a journey to another city or even a, a quest or whatever, it's going to take you time. You need the resources. You need to you need to manage your resources before you go on that journey. That's part of the the vision for the game. The 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 like um what the developers wanted you to experience through the game, I think. Like being over encumbered is a big issue and it happens very easily. Splitting your inventory amongst your party but still being able to access a potion if you need it in mid-battle or whatever. These are things that you need to think about before you go out of the main city to go on your quest in Dragon's Dogma 2. Um, and so, like, you're almost paying for the privilege of not having to worry about some of those mechanics, which is, again, interesting, and your mileage will vary depending on if you care or not about that. But I think, I think, like, if... Can you imagine, right, if, um, like, Elden Ring 2 did this, and they went, hey, if you want more charges in your Estus flask, you can, p- you can pay us for that if you want. Yeah, but is that you what you're saying? That's, not, that's, that's not, not a fair comparison. Is that is that what think? this is? Is that what no, this is? Because it's not a permanent teleport. You don't get to constantly use that fast travel point consistently. Yes, you can place down that marker somewhere, but you can also unlock that through the game just by playing. It's not that beneficial. And also, I just want to say this. Um, I don't know which one of how many of you guys have played it. Uh, if you uh, don't buy the purchases, don't buy the microtransactions. It'll ruin your experience with the game completely unnecessary there you go we me and uh to give you uh, context me and the i've got it despawns buying it after the show matt's 10 hours in where are you at uh i should be about 10 ish hours and i might be a little bit earlier than that like gotcha. eight ish or something like that okay yeah so what do you think what do you think of dragon's dogma 2 oh uh, i like it a lot i think it's a very very unique and interesting game uh i do think it has some issues but I think what I like about the game overpowers the issues by like a very significant margin. Where well, I the don't issues. care about the issues. Uh, some frame rate drops in certain places. Not having a lock on camera is kind of annoying at first <laughs> okay. until you play the game and you're actually like seeing how it works and it creates a more cinematic experience in a really weird and interesting way. You and Matt, Matt disagree. The same thing. Yeah. No, no, no. You and Matt disagree oh. on the lo- uh, agree on the on both the issues you have, mm-hmm. but Matt very much hates the uh, no lock on. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just different. Because I, I, I could get why you could get into it. My, my issue was like early on, I, I like so I started as the mage, and I just found that incredibly boring and tedious. Like starting as the mage and going like, you know, a lot of the early game enemies are harpies. They fly. And I'm, I'm a mage, and I'm struggling to fight you fuckers. Like, I can't lock on, so I'm doing fireballs that take me four seconds to cast, and I'm getting nowhere close to you. Like, this is annoying. I don't feel good or powerful or fun. And then switch over to the fighter, and I'm having a great time. Like, I think the combat's good as a fighter. I just want to say that's a skill issue, man. Because <laughs> I'm like, don't as well. Because I think the problem is you're trying to use the fireball when you just use your normal attacks to let you get fall to the ground. But the normal attacks are so dull. You, did you unlock the charge version or did you switch to the fighter before you could unlock the I charge version? I switched to the fire before I unlocked the charge version. So yeah, I, to be I, fair, I, I do... I did, I did now switch to the archer because I needed it for a certain quest line, which again pissed me the fuck off. Some dude was like, come meet me way out over here. I traveled for like two days to get to him. Then he was like, you don't know how to shoot a bow. Fuck off. And I was like, I'm going to kill you. Mm. I'm going to murder your face. <laughs> That's fair. Um, and then I have to take two days travel back to the fucking city to switch to an archer. Then like, and I was, oh, I was tamping. Anyway. Should have just bought um, the fast travel from the start. You should have. You should have. Yeah, you should have. Yeah, should have. <laughs> yeah little ca money Capcom man appeared behind him with like, you could pay me for the privilege. <laughs> um, uh, but I switched to the archer and, and I was like, I'm not going to like the archer because I didn't like the mage. But actually, archer's pretty good done fun. So, yeah, I don't know. Interesting. It's an interesting yeah. discussion. It's an interesting discussion. It's an interesting game. And I think a lot yeah. of, uh, clearly a lot of people love it, which is awesome. But I would say, buyer beware. Yeah, I think if you've got a lot of time to put into the game and you're into that kind of, you know, all the things we've discussed, it's probably for you. If you're the sort of player who, you know, is enjoying dropping into Helldivers for half an hour a night and that's kind of all the time you've got, I don't think this game is for you. Um, Crash, I don't know if you disagree, but... Uh, I, maybe, kind of. I think I need to put a little bit more time into the game, but yeah. I think with half an hour, you could just load up the game, leave a town, go on a short adventure, run into some random ogre, have your pawn jump on the ogre, pull it off the cliff, the pawn dies with the ogre, and have a whole experience that you'll remember for a very long time. Yeah. Possibly. The, but I don't know how often stuff like that happens in the game is the only thing the the whole porn you know consensual slavery thing that they've got going on is kind of strange to me it's, <laughs> it's not really i so it's two different countries and one of them it's slavery and the other one it's not slavery if i'm not oh mistaken. is it okay i'm gone yeah so yet. one of them one of them you you probably missed the dialogue because you 100 have gotten there right okay <laughs> Because in that first little village you spawn in, there's dialogue about that if you talk to some of the people. Oh, really? Yeah, they explain the difference in how they view the pawns. So, like, the city that you would be in, the, the country that you're in right now, uh, reveres them more, whereas the other country views pawns as slaves. Um, oh, okay, no, I, I understood that. But, yeah. like, from a... Uh, I haven't seen any evidence that that's the case. Everybody's mm. like, yeah, the poor <laughs> aren't slaves. We love them. Now do my dishes. Yes. Slaves. <laughs> and they're okay with it, so we're okay with it. So you mean when slavery ended and some black people stayed with people, right? And they were like, well, we don't yeah, know what to do now. In dental. <laughs> we don't know what to do now, so we're not going to leave. So, yeah. yeah but the, got, but yeah. the weird thing is the pawns, the way the pawns themselves talk about themselves is weird. When, oh, like, yes, yes, it, yes. That, like, early on, to, to, to explain... This is so early on, so it's not a spoiler. To explain that you should not go in the water. <laughs> a pawn goes into the water, gets eaten by, like, Cthulhu or whatever the fuck lives in the water. <laughs> no, and he's to like, be... don't worry about me. I'll probably see you at some other point. It's all chill. <laughs> fair, I love you. He doesn't, he doesn't willingly walk into the water. He no, just no, no, starts no, getting pulled no, down. Yeah, he's, he's like, like oh, don't save me. It's not like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, so you're my better, I'm going to to show you what happens when you walk the floor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know it's right. prepared that maybe I don't know. Um, Interesting. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, yeah, we'll have a lot more to talk about uh on Dragon's Dogma 2 on MXAM Extra. Um and of course we'll talk about it again next week as well as so keep it locked to MXAM 
Um, boys, let's get into uh, this week's dashboard. We've got a bit of news to talk about. Um, weirdly, we spoke about this like last week. Uh, Xbox is prototyping a native Xbox handheld. Rumor, clear, 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 rumor tag on this one. Uh, but it does come from Jez Corden, who was talking on the Xbox 2 podcast and said, quote, not like, uh, not, no, not a cloud handheld, a fully native Xbox handheld. Um... He did also go on Twitter and say, don't listen to me, I'm an idiot. Um, and a bunch of other different things. But I think he's just covering his tracks. I think there's definitely... We know there's been murmurs about this. It's, this has come up in conversation way too much as of lately um, for it not to be true. And when I say what is true is something may be designed doesn't mean we will ever see that something. Yeah. Um, but we had a little bit of a discussion about it. This gets me excited. I was thinking back... Um, you know, I, I've been I've been trying to get an Xbox handheld for God knows how long now in terms of like, I, I bought a Windows laptop to try to play games off it that way. Never came to fruition. I have bought quiche keys. I've bought the controller mounts. I've done all of it. I, I own a Steam, a Steam Deck that doesn't get used too often, I'll be honest. Um, but if they can make an Xbox handheld that has great, graphical fidelity and solid frame rate that could be the thing that gets me back to playing games solely on xbox as we all know i, I move mainly to steam now uh, and pc um but that's because of the handheld that's because of that device it's it's though it doesn't get used often at one time when i do go on a trip i want to be able to take my games with me now if xbox do eventually come out with a native handheld console it could be huge, in my opinion, in terms of it could be huge for the people in the ecosystem already. No, it's not going to become a switch. You know, it's not going to become um, anything more than feeding the audience they already have that are interested in that. But um, yeah, what are you guys excited for a native handheld console? We'll start with you, Despawn. Um, yes, kind of, maybe. Uh, it's weird. So we, when we had the discussion about do Xbox need a handheld, like I was very much in the case of not really, but as I've been thinking about it more, uh, the idea of just like you say, like a dedicated piece of hardware that just just we know will run their games, uh, does sound interesting. And again, we know me being an idiot with money. If they release something that looks good, <laughs> I will buy it. You can't see it because I've been moving my room around a little bit, but there is a uh, Quest 3 just off screen here that hasn't been played in two weeks that I absolutely adored. Um, but yeah. So, yeah. Like, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic, shall we say. Let's put it that way. Like, if they release a decent handheld that will run all their games at a good frame rate, like, I'd be happy. Like, I know a lot of people are like, oh, I need it to run 1080, 60K. Give me 120 frames, all of it, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, make it make me a cup of tea in the morning, that kind of stuff. Like, if it runs 720 and 60 frames a second consistently for all of the games. No? no? You no, want it? You no. want the 1080? Uh, 720, stop it. I'm not buying anything that runs at 720. Okay. No, like, right, well, no, I'm more no. of a frame rate than a uh, fidelity guy. Like, if it runs everything at 60 frames, that. I'm happy. No, I, I agree with that as well, but no, no, we can't, you can't let them get away with that. So, no, no, crash, I mean, back me oh, up, please. please I crash. think if you I, <laughs> I think if you're going for a handheld, you kind of have to take what you can get. I think there will be certain games where you will get 720, and I don't think there's anything you can do. No, about I agree. I agree. No, 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 no. Let me, let me, let me, let me be clear on what I was saying. Okay. We shouldn't just accept that from Xbox. Oh, so you're saying everything 720? They can't we come should, out and be we like, just see, everything we could, 720. Uh, it's a 720 machine. Like, fuck off. Get out of here with that shit. Get out of here with that noise. No, no, no. It will depend on how big they decide to make it what price point are they trying to hit? Like mm -hmm. all of these things that like, you know, you say handheld, you have an idea of what that looks like in your mind. I bet all of us have quite a different idea of what that looks like. Okay, are what does that look like for you? For me, it's probably almost identical to a Steam Deck. Okay, Crash, what does it look like for you? Wait, 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 we'll go through details in a sec. A little Game Boy Advance. Leave the podcast again. Um, <laughs> next one, what does it look like to you? uh yeah i'm leaning more into the steam deck like i was originally leading rog levels but no and i think steam deck 
So I, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm, no, no, no. You're a Game Boy. No, 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 no. I just want to. I just want to say. I just want to say. I don't know what a what a rog looks like. I only know what a Steam Deck. Very looks. Sim- very similar to a Steam Deck, but it's a little bit more. It's a lot more powerful. Um, uh, what I was going to say was a little bit more sturdy. Mm. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, um, yeah. That's where I am at though. I'm at I'm at rog level with it. That's where I right. would want it to be. And I yeah. think they they're not going to position this like a premium product like a uh, xbox series x mm-hmm. i think you position this like an s i think you position it like a i agree an entry point like a cheaper thing a, even a companion to the s maybe but you know a lot of people aren't going to fork out the money for an x and then also buy the handheld although probably everybody on this call would um <laughs> Except Crash, Crash is you're already on it. He doesn't even have an yes. X. Yeah, yeah. Still got my S, um, baby. He's waiting for the Gears X. That's, it's never he, gonna come out. <laughs> never gonna come out. It's not happening, bro. It's not happening. <laughs> Whether or not they will, they need to put a lot of storage into it. I think. Yes. I think it needs to be a what, like a 500 gig? Probably needs to be a terabyte. Well, I think what they'll end up doing is the same as what steam does and uh what the steam deck does right where it'll have 500 internal and then they'll have a memory card that can run and then um, they have stuff their, off propri- it. their proprietary I, memory cards like do you make them the same ones as on the series x they're expensive no they won't even fit in that machine brother yeah there's, there's no way there's no but, way but, but that adds more value you, proposition you remember you could, what i you remember oh, what i said about the game boy advance of speed oh, shut the <laughs> the <hell up. laughs> i like it you know i'm what? just saying it fits if, if they did that and it was and it actually looked like a cartridge slot and it like functioned that way, people would probably quite like that. Yeah. Like it would be cute. Do you know what I mean? At least like if you've got to do that. That would to be fair, that would be a good movie in my eyes. If you could be like, right, I've got all of my games on this uh, like the the Xbox uh, the, the, memory yeah. card that uh-huh. sits in my X, but I'm going traveling for a week. Unplug it, plug it into your handheld control yeah. your console, and I everything's would... just runs as normal. I would even lean in and sell collector's editions of Hellblade with a Hellblade cartridge, and go cool. If you if you have a if you have an Xbox handheld and you want help and you want a Hellblade cartridge, we're going to start selling them. They'll, that'll never happen. No. Somebody third party might do it, like uh, you know these people who make you know physical versions of games that don't come out. Limited run, limited I'll, run will be on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll put you all a sticker. It'll be fine. Another idea. It'd be <laughs> cute. I don't think that'll ever happen. No. Um, but these are the things that like. Like, I think, yeah, it's probably got to have over 500 gigabytes of storage. Yeah. I think it's, you know, it's expensive. And But I don't think they want to position it as an expensive thing. So are they really going to take that much of a hit on it? Maybe. Xbox could. No. Do. No. Do. Again, Microsoft could. Yeah, Microsoft yeah. could. Yeah, all right. Xbox could. Do. <laughs> Again, go on, crash. Do we think there's a possibility that they release it with multiple SKUs, or do you think it's one SKU down the line and possibility I, if it does well to do let me SKUs? let me go out on the let me go out on the ledge and say this? I think you will never see Xbox do anything with SKUs again. That's ludicrous. No, I disagree. Okay, I, that's, that's fine. You can We're disagree. not playing agree disagree right now, but no, disagree. I'm sorry. That's sorry that's 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 agree or disagree for this I week. Now. Disagree. I generally think that. I, I generally think that. I think um, the, the only problem I have with that is just how well the Series S has done for them in getting them in households. Yeah. Unless you're saying that they'll they'll go for the small the weaker skew and just knock out the bigger skew and not do a Series X. Said what I said. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I uh, no, I'm, I'm with uh, I'm with Martin Crush on this one. I think the effect that like granted the the buzzwords and all this like can they can xbox run this game and stuff doesn't look great on paper but yeah like the the impact that the s has had on getting xbox into houses i think it makes sense for them to keep doing that stuff would they do that with a handheld though i don't think they would no i agree i think the only way they do do it with a handheld is if they have a cloud only version that is essentially exactly comparable to a playstation portal and oh, then a God. stop and stop. then I'm a, tired. a native I'm tired. version stop. that is different just stop. I'm not doing this. We're not we're not doing this. Xbox, are, I swear to God, you're not yeah. doing this. I'm gonna say they no. already have a cloud version. It's called your mobile. It's called your mobile. Yeah. I could see them doing a weaker version. No PlayStation. No, just I could see them doing a weaker version that does have cloud. Just stop. I can't. Look, the, Look at my hair, boys. It ain't even shaped up. You know why? Because I'm so stressed about this conversation. Like, stop. Exact conversation. Look at mine. 
Yeah, I know. We saw the photo, bro. I'm like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. I don't know what you were thinking, but hey, I'll leave you to it, man. I'll leave you to it. <laughs> bro, you look like Dr. Eggman. <laughs> I think it looks good, D Spawn. Thank you. Fuck Thank you, man. No, 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 it's Crest Stay Quiet. <laughs> no, I'm not getting in the middle of this. No, no, okay, agree or disagree. Do I look like Eggman? Okay, I think uh, T-Spawn looks like a very beautiful fellow, okay? Beautiful That's why you're my favorite. You tell, yeah. And you I definitely didn't call you a bitch later. Time. Absolute pussy. Anyway, <laughs> uh, let's move along then, shall we? Let's talk about some Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate 3. Remember that game, guys? Baldur's Gate 3. Great game. Amazing game. Everybody loved it. Everyone's clamoring for more. Who mm -hmm. wouldn't want to see more of that game and that franchise and that world? Am I right? Larian. Larian well, don't want to see any more of it. Well, Larian have said no. Um, yeah. <laughs> Larian have come out and said that they will not be working on any DLC, expansions, or a sequel to Baldur's Gate 3. Nah, this has me very, very sad, if I'm totally honest. I um, To be expected, if I'm being honest as well, um, but... Yeah, sad. Very, very, very sad. I'm seeing a lot of stuff on the on the interwebs uh, before Hasbro's came out with a... They've come out with a statement. We'll read down a little bit. But it was like, yeah, well, this is what happens when you work on somebody else's IP and make them tons of tons of money, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if they don't let you play ball with your IP the way you want to, you take your ball and you go home. You say, no, okay, we're not, we're not interested anymore. So, yeah, good for them to come out and say it, though, because I feel like... It could they could have literally lived on through that hype of like people waiting for Baldur's Gate 3 for the next maybe two games. Um and just let that linger. I'm happy they actually come out and said, like, yeah, we're not doing that. It's not happening. So don't expect it. Don't <laughs> don't want it. Don't think of it. And just keep enjoying Baldur's Gate 3 and play that through as many times as you want in in all its glory. But yeah. Matt, you're you're our big D D guy. How does it make you feel? I, I I wouldn't have expected Baldur's Gate 4 for a very, very long time. I could have seen some sort of expansion, you know, egg, egg, you know, whatever that looked like, spin-off. Um, but of course, they, they have Divinity Original Sin as well, right? So that is probably the next thing maybe from them, or maybe they're doing something completely different. Who knows? I think, like, the important thing is not the IP of Baldur's Gate. It's the passion and... Um, pedigree i guess now of, of larian studios right and the care that they clearly put into their games um and so that will be the thing i'm excited for i'm excited for the next larian game not the next boulders gate so okay like it made me understand because this is where I'm, I'm i'm getting a tad bit confused i didn't play divinity at all so th those are not those are not D, &D games right they're not yeah. super far off from Baldur's Gate. They're really not super far off from Baldur's Gate. Yeah. Interesting. So what Baldur's Gate just has a little bit more of the roleplay element and where you're rolling for a lot more stuff in Baulders yeah. Gate than you do in D&D. &D. And, and not in D&D, &D, in, um, in Divinity, Divinity in the Original Divinity. Sin. But a lot of like the baseline of what's there is already there and it's easy. Like they've already got that in sort of like their i want to say in the dna of what the studio does where they so just what, added a little bit more dnd flavor so what you're telling me is we just wait for the next divinity original sin we make sure that hopefully it's four player co-op right mm -hmm. and what we do I, is we just get ourselves it's already co-op i know i'm just yeah. saying i hope the next one is co-op um what we do is we get our own dice and every decision we just make ourselves roll for the situations I, I would be shocked if they don't bring that into whatever the next game they do is so this yeah, is going to be my question to Matt. Do they, are they able to do that? Is that, is that a, you know, like, you know, WB owns a nemesis system. Like, mm -hmm. do, does, does someone at Dungeons and Dragons own rolling dice? Rolling dice. Of dice? No. <laughs> like, in that way. No. In that way. I don't know. That's why I'm asking the question. Eh? I'm asking the question. Uh, it's fair. It's fair. Um, as far as a mechanic in a game, I don't believe so. Certainly rolling dice, no. Like, anybody can make a, a E20-based tabletop role-playing game. Yeah. Um, but, you know, D&D &D as, a, as a brand have fucked around a lot. You know, they tried to start charging, uh, like, Critical Role and other yep. Let's Play channels for using the AIP and, and this kind of stuff, right? And it, it's that constant conversation of video games and, and stuff like D&D &D and that weird gray area of going... Technically, every streamer 
shouldn't be making money off streaming another person's IP, right? But it's hey, free fuck advertising you, for the Matt. company. And... Hey, fuck you. What are you saying about that? Fuck you. I'm not you. saying I agree with it. Oh, okay, okay. No problem, man. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll let you agree with it back. is all I'm saying. I'll take, it, I'll take it back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. Um, I didn't mean it. There's loads of weird stuff all around that with an art and fucking, you know, all these things. So um, we're constantly in that weird space with things. So could... D and D go after, or Hasbro go after Larry, and if they decided to put dice rolling into Divinity Original Sin, I don't think so. Um, yeah. Here's my question: Who knows? Do we want another fantasy game from Larian? Yes. Yes. Okay. Would you not like think, to see I them think, try something new? No, I understand what you're okay. saying. What what Despawn is saying is he wants Mass Effect, but with Baldur's Gate <laughs> mechanics, um, no. which I kind of get. Um, no, please. And I'm sure a lot of people would be excited for. But but I agree. I think like you you know there's a, there's they've told this incredible fantasy story in Baldur's Gate. Um, I think lean into that side of stuff. Not to say that you couldn't diverge from it, but not to sit here and like you know talk about Baldur's Gate again, like in the same way we have. But like, dude, I don't care about fantasy. They made me care about fantasy. Yeah, they can make you care about space. They, nobody can make me care about space. I don't care. Sorry, I didn't mean to upset you, Despawn. But I don't <laughs> care. I've tried. I get it. You can't breathe out there. I don't understand. No one can hear you scream. <laughs> you liked Fallout, right? Uh, I liked Fallout Four. That was my first ever Fallout, though. I think like that's, a why I, that's why I liked it. Larian would kill a Fallout game. Nope. 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 I'm not saying no. it's going to happen. Yes. I'm not saying it should happen. Yeah, no, sorry, let me rephrase. Yes, they would. No, thank you. Larian they, would kill a lot of different types of games, for being sure. honest. Sure. Yeah. Larian their would own kill thing. a FIFA game, bro. They would kill FIFA. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, they would kill a They would literally <laughs> kill... <laughs> Why am I dice rolling in my FIFA game? I would I love that. That's pretty much what football is at FIFA is at this point, mate, yeah. honestly. Absolutely. At least uh, you don't got to pay for the microtransactions for that. Exactly, right? exactly. exactly. I'm in the ref space, works. I got to roll a charisma check. Yeah. I'm, in, I'm into uh, it. I'm into it. Do I get advantage on this penalty save? Yeah, yeah. But uh, there is there is a little bit of Baldur's Gate 3 news um, that also came along with them saying they're not working on what they're not working on. Um, there's a roadmap that uh, includes they're working on um, endings. So all of the endings having fully fledged cutscenes, um, no matter what the ending is. Uh, this comes from Swen uh, again over on Twitter. He said, as uh, for Baldur's Gate 3 and its characters, uh, they now belong to the WOTC. I don't know what that is. Wizards um, of the Coast. And- Thank you very much. Yeah. And I Keep think uh, they understand how important they are for the community. I trust that they will be treated with respect. Um, oh, okay, this is not even what I was trying to get to, so I do apologize. Um, there is a bunch of stuff coming still for Baldur's Gate 3, which is awesome. See, I think this is the this is the problem for me when it comes to Baldur's Gate. I don't, as much as I love the characters that are there, I don't realize that they are a character that's already known and owned and things like that, because I don't play D&D like that, right? So... I thought these were all characters. Go on, talk to me, Matt. They're not. Oh. So, so they're, the, as far as I know, look, there are millions of D&D books. Somebody's probably going to pull a book from 1994, which oh, a star okay. everyone was mentioned in once. Um, but, but yeah, as far as I know, these are like sort of Larian created characters, but now D&D, Wizards of the Coast, own th- those as like IP. Huh. So, so Sterling so, was and, created and for Baldur's Gate. Bald- but he's but he was created as part of the licensing agreement, so he's owned yeah, so, by Wizards uh, of the Coast. Well Wizards of the Coast owns Baldur's Gate. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So anything that would get created in attachment to that would be their property. Yeah. Which is exactly so, what it is. So and, so as if if we made sorry, sorry, I'm cut you up. No, 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 you're so the same thing as like if Harry Potter if um uh well Hoggle's legacy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If they made a sick character that everyone fell in love with WB would own that sort yeah. of thing. They couldn't be taken somewhere else, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. yeah Okay, yeah. cool. Makes perfect sense. Okay. But D and D Wizards of the Coast um, mix and match a lot. So like, there will be characters from obscure books that all of a sudden get a game, and ah. you know they're trying to find that new audience for those characters and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, th- there was that D and D game we played. Um, it was like a third person. Oh action yeah, game. yeah. We yes. played uh, Sheer- Sheerwood. She, she, no, 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 no not sure. I, I remember um, what it, it's the one with um, the 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 dwarves and stuff like that. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, I played one. it. 
No, not Warhammer. No, it wasn't Warhammer. It was D&D. I don't remember, I remember I'm the sorry, one where you're talking about games. Oh, no, I'm, cool. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, D- uh, it was before Despawn was with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, oh, I was early on the pod. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, the, but they were all established <laughs> characters from D&D books and stuff like that. And, like, you know, our characters were, like, I think I was playing, like, your adopted daughter or something. And oh, that had been, like, established okay. in, like, a D&D yeah. um, book from a long was- time ago and stuff, so throwaway line in some random book and they're like we're yeah, gonna make all characters yeah, no, I, don't know. Yeah. I think i know i think they were established established characters oh, okay. were, like excited that those characters were were getting some love so so it wouldn't surprise me at all if you see Carlax spin-off stuff and astarian spin-off stuff whether that's books or um or you know standalone games that are completely different or third person action or you know whatever whatever um it'll be interesting to see what happens with them but of course people really fucking love those characters so you better get it right mm-hmm. if you're going to fuck around in there. And they don't have a great track record of getting it right as far as no. I'm aware. So, so we'll see. A prime example, I think there is a kind of, uh, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like an auto battler uh, that Wizards uh-huh. of the Coast own the rights for. Uh-huh. Uh, and they, like, as soon as uh, Asterion got popular, they stuck him in the game. Cool. Like, oh, nothing, sure. to do with Lar- nothing to do with Larian Studios or anything, but because they own the IP rights, they were like, cool, we're going to put Asterion Lar- in this game. Interesting. Hmm. So yeah, well, so they're, looking, they are I'm well the... within the rights to do that as well because, like we say, they own the rights to the, all of those characters, so they can put them wherever they like. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to seeing what Larian do next. I mm. really, really am. I'm looking forward to seeing how they keep um, treating Baldur's Gate as well as a mm. as someone who's still playing the game. And obviously, we're playing it through uh, on the channel twitchtv slash Xbox and me. Um, yeah, it's just a phenomenal game. I heard your session went very well, Crash. It went fantastic. <laughs> Look at that smile. Yep. Fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely okay. wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. You didn't miss. Didn't miss nothing, apparently. No, nothing no, bad. Definitely Everything not four, amazing. Definitely not four days. Okay. Um, moving on. Uh, Resident Evil director and Hi Fire Rush producer Shinji Mikami, my hero, has seemingly started another new studio. Uh, this info comes from official website for Shadows of Damned Hella Remastered. I don't know where that came. Um, under the creator tab, uh, an image of Shinji Mikami is shown alongside a short bio uh, biography. The sentence uh, of it reads, after leaving Tango Gameworks, he established Yam Yu? Yam Yi? Yam Yu? Cam Yu? Cam Yu? Cam Yu? Cam Yi? Cam Yi? Inc? I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll get the name. We'll get the name. One of them might have been right. Point. Um, yeah, you know, you're definitely Cam Camu. Yeah, uh, Camu Inc. So, looks like Shinji Mikami is working on something and has started a brand new studio. This makes me very sad. Uh, once again, it's um, it makes me happy, obviously, to see Shinji Mikami making more games. It's going to be something, hopefully, something that I enjoy. Obviously, I love The Evil Within. I think that's a fantastic series. And that's kind of why I'm sad, because I know you look a little bit confused. It's like, I really wanted to see an Evil Within 3 with him at the helm of it under Xbox. I thought that would have been really cool to have seen. Um, but that man doesn't like the big establishments. We, If you look at it, it's like Capcom, no. And then obviously Bethesda, he was there for a little while. And now in Xbox Ball, no, I'm good. I'm out. Like, mm. no, that guy doesn't like to be under under anybody's <laughs> under anybody's uh rope or, or, or covers or whatever you want to call it um yeah i'm excited though this is obviously a story mainly for me because i'm such a big resident evil nerd but yeah exciting i hope he does i hope he makes something that isn't ghostwire tokyo as well because yeah yeah so do you think he's work like i don't know like because obviously this was just under the creator tab of a remaster do you think he's actually working directly on the remaster with them or is it just that he was listed as like a previous like creator of the game haven't got a do lally lu but whatever happens i'm excited more games from shindy is good yeah hopefully if they're third person action adventures when it's basically an action adventure this is survival yeah. horror I survival mean, horror. some of the later games, like, well... Survival horror. I yeah. think for on, you could make an argument for action adventure. Mm-hmm. No. It's no. been kicking They're people in games, four. Dude, these... bad, yeah, but it's not... Yeah, but it's Su- not... You yeah. suplex guys in robes. That's not survival horror. 
you could make an argument for action adventure because mm-hmm. the, the problem with genres is genres end up being very loose terms a lot of the time. Yeah. Right. If you want to yeah. fit something, I'm, I'm not saying it is or it should be classified yeah. as that. I'm just saying you could probably classify it as an action adventure. No, yeah, FIFA is an RPG. We all know that. So mm-hmm. let's mm-hmm. just uh, let's just carry on. Let's just carry True. on with our lives. Matt, you look confused. You okay? I'm looking up the Shadow of the Damned, and I've I've no recollection of this game. Really? At all. I've never heard of it before. Me either. Uh, they, they put out a trailer at PAX. It's mostly the main character CGI'd into a real world scene, mm-hmm. maybe killing the people working on the game. I can't really quite figure out because I'm watching it muted. And then mm-hmm. there's like four or five shots of the game, and uh, like no idea. Third person action, I guess. He's yeah. riding a motorbike at some point. Yeah. Not a it's clue. Basically, exactly as described, it's a third person action game. I think there's like a talking flaming skull that follows you around. Yeah. It looks uh, like it's a and thing. Yeah. Uh, basically, shoot a lot of demons. Cool. Love like, demons. Imagine ordering um, Devil May Cry off Wish. That's a great description. I love that description. <laughs> Woof. That's, that was made. I mean, sometimes I you, know you get that. good stuff off Wish. What are you saying? No, you don't. Yeah. Stop lying to people. Uh, boys, it's time for the Guess That Game. Uh, this is where I have a game in my mind, and you guys have to guess it by asking me yes and no questions. I will give you one minute and 30 seconds to guess, and you will all get to decide on what you think said game is. Uh, the points sit at Crash on four in our lead, Matt on one, D Spawn on two, and me on two. Are you ready? I'm ready. Yep. Yes. How are you feeling today, boys? Are you feeling like you're going to get? No. I think I've already got it. Oh. <laughs> Make your guess, please. Hey, I'll tell <laughs> you what. <right laughs> oh, you idiot. <laughs> okay, you ready? Here we go. Yeah. In, do you want to see the time or not? I think you shouldn't see the time. No. Just keep going. Yeah. Okay. All right, right. Here we you go. Just What's the order? Order, order, order. So we're going to go Crash, Matt, D spawn. Okay. Three, two, one, go. 360. No. Xbox One. Uh, I'm, no. Uh, no. Are we doing series? Okay, I'm going to give you it again. Are we doing series or game? We always do series. I think, I, I think it's series, but you have a specific game in mind. I thought I that's do. how we always did it. But if we you do. guess the series. Okay, cool. Perfect. Let's do, then feel bad saying no then. But yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. Go again. Go again. All okay. right, ready? Three, two, one, go. 360. Just no. Go wherever we were at. Did it release in the 90s? No. Oh, yes. T- technically. Capcom? Yes. Xbox? Yes. Did it also come to PlayStation? Yes. Multiple uh, characters you could play as? Yes. Fighting game? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, I think I've got it then. Um, uh, uh, what can I ask? Are there more than six entries in the franchise? Yes. Hmm. Um, damn it. Uh, uh, okay, no, it could be a couple. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like my brain's gone completely blank. Um, Capcom fighting game. Oh, okay. Uh, is one of the characters called Ryu? Well, that's I want you to know that that doesn't <laughs> narrow it down at <laughs> all. Yes. It really does okay. not yes. narrow it down. Yes, at all, they game. put him in I'm every gonna, one of their fighting I'm games. Pause the timer. Okay. I'm letting you all know now because you think you know. You have to get the number of the damn tile. Wait, yes. wait, I, didn't, I never said no. I know it. I've cut I never it. Asked. I'm, host. No. I'm cutting it. You better guess the title now. That's not D-Spawn, how this game works. You've ruined it for everybody. Have I ever That's just got a game point works. I've ruined it for these you. Rules. Well, hold on. Does, does everything we've set up until this point then hold water? Like, the, yes. now that we have to get the specific game, did it release in the 90s? Did it also come no, to this? No, it didn't release in reality. Yeah. Nice. Okay. And was it on 360? No. Okay. Was it an arcade game originally? Nope. All right, I've got a guess then. I don't feel good about it, and I blame... I needed these points, Despawn. I blame you. That's fine. The whole point is to keep it vague, Despawn, and yeah. you've ruined it. You ruined it. No, the whole point is to get points. No, I, don't, yeah, I don't want any more points. You get points, not give uh, everybody the point. Okay, like, I have, you know. I have That's a fine. real guess, and then a guess that I hope it is. Let me write it down. This fucking guy. How dare you ruin the sanctionary of Guess That Game. 
this segment's getting cancelled i'm telling you thank god I hate last this time you're trying to cancel it the discord wasn't happy so yeah. matt go on you go first Street Fighter 6, or maybe Smash Bros. Ultimate. Is he is real in Smash Bros. Ultimate? I think he is. He is, yeah. He is, Focus. but is that, is that on Xbox? I want it to be. Mm. Are spawn? I went with 4. Crash? Street Fighter 2. I'm going to give you all points. It was Street Fighter 6. Okay. Um, <clears throat> hey, what? I need the points. Shut give up, me two Matt. points. Give everyone, me one point. everyone gets the points. I can't change the rules midway through as much as I'd love to. Um, <laughs> that leaves Nothing. Crash on five points. That leaves Matt on two points. That leaves Despawn on three points. And that leaves me on two points. Hey, Fix. Welcome the, to the bottom of the barrel. Hey, fuck you, bro. Um, that's, <laughs> that's disrespectful. That's disrespectful. Um, and I'll tell you the reason why I picked it. I actually went and played. I went to uh, see Kung Fu Panda 4 yesterday. Um, mm. I was invited uh, with my friend P Money and we ended up doing a Street Fighter tournament. Um, so I played the game for the first time properly and got absolutely battered i so i made it through the first two rounds against two noobs who didn't know what they were doing destroyed them crash bam 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 then they put us on like the main tv area everyone oh. surrounds us on watches i'm playing against p money first round perfect i was like uh oh i'm in trouble uh -oh. bro i don't understand how that guy is so good at every video game he's good at fifa he's good at gta fair, is it? he's good he's good at Every, he's good at rainbow he's like good at everything like it makes no sense but then again i said to him if you play final fantasy he's like no nah, i don't play those type of games i'm like ah, that's why you're good at all these other games so you know <laughs> you didn't play final fantasy you don't, you don't know about final fantasy 7 rebirth Get out oh of here. he's out here putting 100 hours into rainbow 6 instead exactly. of you know what instead of trying to think how many hours do you have into rainbow 6 bring up the clock bring up the clock that's no, actually quite a fun game I don't, I don't think guess I, how many hours I have in game X. I don't think I can, I can't do it on that on, on here. Can I on Xbox? Uh, you can, on the again, app, it'll got, tell you, it will tell me on the app. I'll yeah, check my it's... Xbox account. Cause I'll have more on Xbox than I will PC. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. I have to update the app. So not today, <laughs> oh, no. lads. Not today. Not today. I'm sorry. I tried. I tried. <laughs> we'll save that for the, for the new segment of the podcast. So, <laughs> new <laughs> segment. <laughs> How long have I had? All right, let's jump into Fix the Sack while we've got a little bit of time left over. Remember, this is where you can email in my Xbox and me podcast at gmail.com. Uh, let me quickly check the actual email real quickly because I did respond to one. So, nope, no new emails there. See, I won the war there, Despawn. You notice that? Didn't come back at me. Got him. Killer Berry, Killer Berry didn't come back at me. He knew I won the argument. Got him. Do we have any uh, new Apple reviews? Any hospitalized grandmothers? I'll check. I'll check. I'll check. No, yeah, I'll, I'll have check. a check. Meanwhile, I'll I will ask Anubis's question. Who says, with Dragon's Dogma 2, Rise of the Ronin, Alone in the Dark, Princess Peach, all releasing this week, and South Park Snow Day releasing next Tuesday? Did you guys remember a South Park game was coming out next Tuesday? I did. Yes, I I've reached out for a code. Yes. Okay. I'm scared. You're Is scared? this the most packed in week? <laughs> yeah, I'm scared for South Park Snow Day. I want it to be good. Do I think it will be? Probably not. Well, Trey, Trey and that have been a part of it. Yeah? To be fair to them. Yeah, they have actually mm -hmm, been a part of the process again. Um, and so I think, a... I think the important thing to remember with this game is it is designed purposefully as what it is. It's not trying gonna... to be... Co-op, third person... Co-op, defense, action? tower defense action. Yeah, yeah like... Okay. I wouldn't... Yeah. Go into it expecting like a stick of truth or a, no, a no, I'm not. I'm not, but I'm just a bit like I wouldn't. I wouldn't go into it expecting anything. A a your typical South Park experience. Yeah, even just the look of like it the, looks the, janky. So much of the charm of Stick of Truth and Fractured Butthole is that it looks like the show. It looks like you're playing the show, mm -hmm. and this very much doesn't. And yeah, that's a choice this is that 3D. they made. It's, yeah, exactly. I, know. I love that's his point. Yeah, yeah. Is it like um? It goes back to the. Do you remember that? the N sixty four game they had mm -hmm. Snow Day? That's literally yeah. what it's in. It's in with that sort of 
All I remember is Vibe. pissing on snowballs and throwing them at people. That's yeah, like, well, that's what, and, that's what I'm hoping we can do in this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that was tower defense, no. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, to answer your question about uh, podcast reviews, the last one I can see is from 21st of January, which I don't yeah, think we covered. I don't think we read this one. I don't think we, I've got this one up as well. Do you want to take it this one? Feel free. Yeah, sure. Uh, so this comes from uh, Bondness. Uh, five stars. Thank you. Uh, Come great on. Come on. Uh, great Xbox podcast that covers everything. Also includes chat about other gaming stuff as well. Excellent banter and laughs. Uh, MC Fix and Crash are a great laugh. The additional poll was welcome and it adds an extra dynamic. Thank you. Uh, Matt adds a serious tone, but is rarely on the podcast. Would highly recommend this podcast. <laughs> Wow! Wait, wait, wait. Uh, wait. So I positioning love... that like a good I... thing hurts me. I'll be honest. Five stars. Five stars. I love that it's like Matt's barely on the podcast. <laughs> Highly recommend the podcast. Highly recommend. <laughs> Just the positioning of that. It was, it, it was the positioning, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. If that had been slotted in earlier, or mm -hmm. yeah, that was. An do you know what I would do? You know what I would have loved. I would have loved just a. Uh, Oh, I love the podcast where well. Matt's rarely on, but adds a serious tone. Chris is... Da, 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 da. No, you're no. right at the end as well. Yeah. Like, Fuck you, Matt, for not showing up. <laughs> good, yeah. good, good. Matt's barely on it. Great. Yeah, Matt's, you know Matt's a serious one and barely turns up. That review really makes me happy, though. Yeah. That, that great, review yeah. makes me happy because, because I think this review is exactly what this show is. It is a bit of everything. We talk about what the hell we want to talk about. We try and have a laugh. And then sometimes matt comes out with like a serious tone of a topic and i'm like huh i'm glad we, I'm glad we got one adult around here which i love and the rest of us all call matt stupid for his opinion <laughs> no no it's sometimes you call him a bitch <laughs> this is also very true this is also very true do you know this guy just ran a whole show right like <laughs> a big games industry show like everyone's loving it millions of views everything that comes on this show like you're a bitch like fuck <laughs> you bro what are you doing here yeah. he needs to ask like a distressor from his like actual life for yeah, yeah. Got, I'm a bitch on gotta this. keep him humble right <laughs> gotta, gotta, gotta keep him humble <laughs> jesus um, christ oh just, can, can you do the question yeah, can you do yeah, it again yeah, 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 I do apologize. I do apologize. Uh, basically, with Dragon's Dong with two coming out, Rise of the Ronin, Alone in the Dark, Princess Peach, all releasing this week, South Park Snow Day right on the horizon. Is this the most packed week in gaming for the year? And I guess are we excited for those for those games? So yes, it is the I would say there's a few titles he's missed off there just because of how big those titles are, right? Like for me, I also have to include Final Fantasy Rebirth on that. And I know look, I should have done it by now, but uh, Infinite Wealth as well, which I haven't finished. It's like all of these games, and they're all games I want to try. I've got and again, privileged position, once again, always, right? Dragon's Dogma, I've got a code for. Alone in the Dark, I've got a code for. Um Ronin, I've got a code for. Um I'm just there going, I don't know what to do. I just need to finish Rebirth. Like, that's all yeah. that's in my head right now. It's like, get through Rebirth as quickly as possible, which is a shame because I don't want to feel like I have to rush through a game that I'm loving, but that is where I'm at. But yeah, it probably is the busiest week in um, aiming I think for the well, year so far. This year, definitely. Um, yeah. Elden Ring DLC week is quite busy, I think. I imagine I think some yes. things are going to move. I think I, things are going to well, move as well. Mm, I things think will probably move, mm. but I think there's a possibility that stuff moves into a week later. Mm. Like I think it's a little bit too early to say that it's going to definitively be the busiest week in gaming, but I think for the moment, I think it's, it's usually November, right? November, November usually has it. They're all waiting. Yeah. yeah but, Where it's like, yeah. hey, we want to release stuff for this year and we don't want to delay it and we want it to be in the game of the year conversation, et cetera, et cetera, all that stuff. Mm, I think it's more just want to be in the market for Christmas monies. Proof. That festive pennies. Yeah, I think it's it's the the level of game there though. Right now, it's a lot of double A's. Yeah, uh, you've got your South Park double A. You've got your Alone in the Dark double A. Um, yeah, Are there's we a lot. Calling Rise of the Ronin triple A. Yeah, it's triple A. Mm. Mm. I don't know if I played it yet. So, have you got it? No. Who's got it? You're not gonna say. Mm, interesting. Damn, how am I the one that's got it? I'm probably the, <laughs> out of all of us, I'm probably the one who is least interested in this goddamn game. No, and no. I'm the one that has it. Me. I'm, I'm the least yeah, interested in it. Yeah. Me and you, yeah. Yeah. I was no, only, like, I, yeah. I get that I should be excited for it, but, but I'm not. I don't think really. those are really, like, you're into, like, the Soul Type game, but, like, the Toy Tec Tecmo uh, games aren't really, like, up your alley. Yeah, not really. You never really played Neo. Know why, though. And, and if any should be, it should be this, right? Like This one's co-op, though, so that's why I've got it, where I'm like, if Chris mm. says, oh, 
I really love this game, which he'll play it at some point. If he ends up going, yeah. I love this game, I'm going to go, well, good, you're going to make me, you're going to, you are literally going to drag me through this game then. Oh, I don't know if I'm ever playing this game, guys. <laughs> Bro, I bought, I bought about the other day. I bought, what did Despawn make me buy the other day? Was it Nightingale? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. yes oh, yes, fuck, yes, yes. Whoever you played the game. Hold on. Uh, I was in the Discord. He didn't make you buy it. <laughs> I was talking about how I was playing it. He's mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm going to get it. And you were like, I'm I, no, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> that's, this is a little bit of a dis disconnect on your guys' part. Cause you guys were like, oh, yeah, we will play it. Fix, you should get it. Mm -hmm. You guys didn't tell Fix, hey, get it. But you were like, you should get it so we can all play together. So, uh, um, and I think there was a stream planned at one point and some other stuff. Not hard planned, but I do, the discussion did happen around all that stuff. I will say that. I will defend Fix on that. Cause so, I remember I was like, nope. My brother. Out of it. My brother. My brother. <sighs> Are you ready for Fix to be really, really annoyed? If uh, you refund this it. game. I have refunded this game. This motherfucker. This motherfucker. This, this game <laughs> was so fucking broken. I could not get past hey. the hosting page. Oh, it I hard it crashed just... every single time I tried to get past the tutorial section. Oh dear. Am I refund it then? Refund it for now, I'd say. Ah, that's fine. Because I'm up. not going to be jumping into it anytime soon. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I'm just like, I'll wait until there's a few more patches and stuff, but like right I now. Mean, mm. Fucking hell, Fix. We haven't even played Helldivers together. It's true. That's yeah. wild. But Fix is done with Helldivers. I was over Helldivers the week it came out, if I'm honest. I'm 100% so in at the moment. Like, I've, I've just seen they've officially announced that there's flying um, bugs. Hey, yo, yeah. wrong podcast, wrong podcast. Let's carry on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, moving, on. moving on, Origin Cookie Man says, if you were in charge of a theoretical Xbox handheld development and release plan, what piece of advice would you give them to allow them to compete with whatever Nintendo or PlayStation have to offer? Examples uh, listed... Okay, whatever. A, uh, power play, e.g. it should be able to run GTA 6 natively. B, uh, price slash value play, uh, e.g. it should be cheaper than a Series X. C, feature play, it should have better frame rates, uh, better features than Nintendo Switch 2, e.g. Steam uh, compatibility slash haptics slash VR. D, other. So, mm, my on. piece of advice, uh, don't even look at the Switch with whatever you're planning. Yes. The Switch is its own anomaly. It's its own thing. It's Nintendo will go off and do its own whatever it needs to do, and Nintendo will be successful. Don't look at the Switch. Don't try and compete with the Switch because the Switch shouldn't have been as popular as it is when you see the way that runs certain games and people are still cool with it. Don't look at the Switch. You can't yeah. do what the Switch does. No. <laughs> or you can't, like, entirely you can't do something that's a little bit better or improves on the Switch stuff unless you're drastically better. Don't, don't look at the Switch, I think. Yeah. Um, I would say. Personally, I think feature parity with what your competitors are doing. So, yeah, uh, haptic feedback. Um, like, I, th I don't know if it's a major concern, but I feel like there are definitely some publishers out there, developers that are like, well, PlayStation's bigger market and it offers haptic controls. So let's just focus on those. Offer that parity so it's easier to port that stuff and you don't have to rework your gameplay. I. I, I think the problem you know, with haptics on a handheld is you're increasing the price of the handheld for haptics. But by how much? Like, if you compare the controllers themselves, which sure. which do and do not have haptics, like it's ten pounds. You're, you're that's a lot. How much? How much of a loss are they taking on a controller already True. for that? And how much of a loss are they already going to be taking on a handheld? Yeah. I just think they're already probably going to be taking losses that adding that loss onto it, that it would be more of an increase than adding haptics to a controller mm. because controllers I, I are generally just, cheaper than a, a handheld. I just think it makes sense to kind of like offer the, an easier parity. Yeah, but you're, but and parity, to be fair, parity, PlayStation on the anomaly. Yeah. PlayStation are like the market like, leader in gaming. Oh, they're the market leader in well, console, console gaming. gaming. They're not the yeah, market yeah. leader in well, gaming. The, well, console gaming, yeah, but this is 100% going to be a, an extension of console gaming. It's not an extension of PC gaming. I disagree. I think that's yeah. where we totally, totally... Di I don't look, again, I don't look at Xbox as a console anymore. I, I look at Xbox as an ecosystem. This is a play in their ecosystem, which is we have PCs, 
we have uh, I, our our one skew xbox moving forward and then we will have a handheld which and then we and then we and then we will have a handheld which is our ecosystem i think you will have like some i think the smartest thing would be to like try and figure out how to do it. and i don't think it'll be something that'll be super easy or even able to do with the first skew some sort of like resume play where you could resume it on your handheld i don't think that'll happen anytime soon i think it hopefully at some point but i do think you'll have features something like that where you could easily pick up and play and something will connect between console and handheld but it won't be sort of the driving force of that console no, I, I i personally don't know if that's going to be possible because from what i understand of like you know quick resume it is hardware specific mm. Mm. It's because it yeah, stores, it stores it in the that. local it stores it in the local ram to let you just if pick could, up and carry on like so i don't know if, if you could they, really transfer that online if they could control Z that a couple a couple times before yeah. it was connected to the local uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> and okay. then throw it onto the handheld, oh, 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 cool. cool. and then yeah. Be fine. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. 100. I mean, the amount of times the game's cra hard crashes anyway, it's fine. Um, like, I don't need quick resume. I think the issue that they're going to run into is a marketing one because Xbox aren't very good at marketing. And I don't think any handheld has been good at marketing. I don't think the Steam Deck marketing's been that good. I don't think Switch is what Switch is, but PlayStation Portal I... has been that good. Of communicating who this is for. Because either you, I think you make the power play, you make it an Asus ROG ally, you make it run all these games at high fidelity, you make it a premium product, and then I think you go scarcity. Yeah. Or you make it a value play, you make it a Series S, thing and you make it a cheap entry point and then you get as many of them fucking out there as possible and you make it a thing that people have who don't own an xbox but both of those are difficult to communicate and get people excited for so i who knows no, scarcity like. scarcity is where it's at mate the, why they buy a switch the microsoft why they, thing that company? wait wait, wait. Well, I, maybe they should be why they, why they buy a switch scarcity why they buy a steam deck you guys were there. Scarcity. Mm. Why did I buy a PS5? Because I couldn't find one for two months. Let me just say this. I think regardless of what route they go, there will be a certain level of scarcity, and the, all companies do that on purpose. I don't think you're not going to run into scarcity with this thing on purpose. I don't think also, Xbox do. It's because no they, one wants their shit. They, <laughs> a pandemic, yada, yada, yada. They tried their best to not do that with the Series S, and the Series S was the one that was most abundant most quickly. Okay. That's I true. don't think I don't think Xbox's play is scarcity and pre and premium da 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 and I don't think that's I a Microsoft it's, play. That's what I would want, but yeah, I get. It. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Mm. It's definitely interesting. I would These love to be able. To, I'd love to be able to sit on the sofa. I thought about it so many times when Hades playing games, where I, like I just want to be able to sit on the sofa and it's like she's playing Stardew Valley, and I'm like, oh, I'll jump in with you for an hour, and it isn't. All right, let's whack out the laptop, or let's set up the second yeah. TV, or this like I know first world problems I get, but like if I could just be like, zoop, yep, here we go. Uh, what we've done, yeah, cool. B -b 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 Headphone in, done, and I'm there. Like that's what I want from Xbox handhelds, and that that to me is why I feel like it is an extension of what they're building. It's doesn't matter where you play these games you can play anywhere cross say blah 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 blah. everything's all built in they have that system in place already so you can do that on a handheld that's no problem i do agree with you on the quick regime stuff like i do think that hopefully it can talk to the console in some way shape or form i think that would be good but i'm not gonna cry if it can't no i think i think the best you're gonna get is like like we have at the moment with like play anywhere uh quick play like you just jump straight back into your save I yeah. don't think you'll get the quick resume. Just the way, just the way the Xbox is designed. Hey, they didn't have to do backwards compatibility. Remember? Sure. We ain't, we ain't that smart. We can't pretend we know what we're talking about. Let's be honest. Uh, hopefully, we answered your question, Roger Cookie Man. But me, I'd I'd value power over everything for me. Um, which doesn't mean it will sell well, but that's what I would want from the system itself. And if I was if I was selling it, I would, I would mark it as the best handheld out there in terms of graphical fidelity and frame rate, if they can hit that. That's how I would go. Because, I, yeah. I feel like that's just such a, a slippery slope for 
handhelds because you're going to end up getting a game and where we've talked about like the switch getting games and it being low ports and people will talk about it but ultimately the switch fans don't care i don't think xbox fans especially right now to when this will release will hold that same sort of like well we don't care we just want it because it's part of xbox and etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah i just i just think it's an additive product it's not a i don't see it like a switch where it's like a, yeah. a whole a whole um, it's more akin to a, na- a native portal like what well, PlayStation have right now. That's what I think they need. Yeah. It looks good. It looks fans. clean. Yeah, it's for it's not it's not to try. It and enhances. Get a whole new market. It's to it enhances your experience. system on the ecosystem. Matt looks exactly. in genuine pain right now, uh, and I think it's because you just oh, I see the problems right mm-hmm. of going yeah. like fucking hell. You can play Baldur's Gate on it but we're going to have this issue with parody again of going, oh, you can't have co-op or, oh, you're going to, and then you're going to... And the gonna... handheld? Yeah. That doesn't, that doesn't matter. But it's a, they but never it's... said parody on the hand. <laughs> no, 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 but this is my, this is it, right? If you call this yeah. a native Xbox thing, then you expect a certain level of parody. And, and if you go, okay, well, now you can't Does... have this feature of the game because you're on the handheld... But you could stream it if you had an Xbox Series X, probably through the hand. Like, you does, just get mess. Does uh, Baldur's Gate work on the Steam Deck? Yes, yeah, terribly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But then, but then, but that's expected on a PC machine, right? Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. You're like, yeah. you have different levels of capability. That's um, all the Xbox is, is a small PC, mate. But yeah, they but won't talk about it like the that, same. Will they? No, they won't. You're yeah. right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. They're, I didn't yeah, mean to upset you, Matt. They'll talk about up. it as a oh, portable Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> For a while. All right. That window. Let's do one more question, shall we, before we get out of here. Uh, Big Willy P says, in case uh, this isn't topic of the show, it wasn't. So thank you for asking. What are your impressions of Marvel's 1943 demo done with Unreal Engine 5? uh this is a true technical marvel pun intended uh you can uh feature all the games here I, did anyone see the unity stuff the yeah, unreal yeah, yeah well, um, i watched the full yeah, thing yeah, i watched yeah. I, I didn't watch the full thing which i didn't know what was going on which is annoying um but i saw the fortnite stuff big issue oh, we didn't know what was going on i didn't know what was going on either and then i shit myself missed my train and got two million views on tiktok with it so there we go <laughs> i like it a lot thanks wait what yeah, we put a TikTok about it on Future Game Show and it got like two million views. So I, oh, I, I, was... I thought you I thought you meant you did a video of you missing your train and then got two million views on TikTok. <laughs> I was like, damn, can you start doing that for my Xbox and me, please? Like, come mm. on. Um I, yeah, I thought I, I saw the Fortnite stuff first before I saw the uh, Marvel stuff. So we'll talk about that. I thought the Fortnite stuff was really impressive. Um yeah. like what they're doing with that game and not just that game, but what they're doing for gaming as a whole. I saw um, the sand design stuff they added and the, the character model movements and things like that, mantle and it was like, bro, this is nuts. Yeah, the amount of like, uh, stuff that they put in, like, I I hate to always use the term, like, beta testing stuff in other things, but, like, they are basically beta testing the, gre- the greatest things yeah. that Unreal can do in Fortnite and then yeah. showcasing it to the world. But, like, not really telling anyone about it, until like we get to things like gdc where it's like you know that game you've been loving and playing for like the last six months it's using the greatest tech we've ever created and you guys have just been loving it well to be fair gdc isn't for consumers no no really. yeah but no but that's it's what I mean, for like, other developers yeah but yeah. like they're not even really like hard telling developers about it but it's just like yeah like six months we've been like testing this thing of like well, uh new yeah. new character models and like uh like the way that models move and stuff like this and it's not just like that, facial though, right? animations it's... and all of that stuff and the uh yeah now they're combining real-time uh ray well, trait like like character modeling it's just like pff, the stuff they're doing is wild i love it it yeah. makes me want to get back into working in unreal engine again I, i'll be honest that was my biggest takeaway of like mm-hmm. huh i make a game no, I can't. I'm, I'm, no, no, no. The answer is no, everyone. I was about to give you a real harsh reality like, check first. I mean, the, answer, the answer is no. The answer is no. But it, the way they talk about it and the way of like how it's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy, but how easy they make it seem like it can be done yeah. is nuts with all the tools that are now at, at people's dispense. The barrier you know, to it, entry keeps getting lower is what lower, they're doing. Yeah. 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 Like, you still need the knowledge. Like again, I've talked about of it a couple of times. I like last year tried to start making a game and f- like unreal is 
a whole different beast. Like Unreal Engine yeah. developing in that is wild. Like the node functions that they use is crazy. But when you get your head around it and you start making things that actually work, it oh was, man, you, you feel so the good. The thing that blew my mind was the, the armor, the armor tear and stuff mm -hmm. they did. And I was like, wait, what? That's nuts. Like, yeah, yeah it's crazy. It's um, worth a watch. Like, even like you say, GDC is not for the public. It's for devs. But this is accessible in a way to the public, which is what they're yeah. aiming for, right? They, yeah, it's, I think uh, they built a pipeline of going, you play Fortnite. Now make mm -hmm. Fortnite games. Now make other things you didn't think were possible. Now you're in Unreal, and now you want to work at Epic, and it, we'll pay you to come make good stuff for we us. Were, like, we were watching it with Haley, and Haley was saying that her kids are, are doing... Um, a lot more stuff than she had to go on an AI course the other day. Um, just little things like that. Um, stop pulling faces, despawn. Never. Uh, Never. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you, yeah. You're, you're going to evolve or die, my friend. I know, um, I know. <laughs> yeah. And, but it was, she was like, cool. They're developing. I like, don't understand yeah. that they're developing games. I don't even know what they're doing. She's like, I was like, yeah, hey, that's what's happening now. Like, that's what you got to remember. When we grew up, we were like, be a plumber, <laughs> be, a, be yeah. an electrician, which don't get me wrong. I'm not putting those jobs down in any way, shape or form. But that like, that's what we were forced to do. That's what we were told to become, right? Now it's like, oh, oh, you really like video games? Oh, you should become a game designer. Mm -hmm. If someone would have said that to me back in the day, I would have been like, yeah, all right, whatever. Like, I'd be, be a game designer. I now, wish like, I had that yeah, as a kid. Here you go. Download, download this engine, sit mm. on YouTube and watch these tutorials, all free. Everything we're talking about right now, free, mm -hmm. and you can make a game. Nuts. Absolutely yeah. crazy. Yeah. Uh, go on, Chris. You seem like you are going to say something. Good talk, good talk. remember. Good talk. I watched, <laughs> um, anyone watched The Gentleman no, uh, on no. Netflix. Okay, no. I started watching that, and there's one moment where, where like, a guy goes to say something, and they're silent, and he just goes, thanks, Jeff. So now I keep saying yeah, that to Hayley. So, so now nah, that's what I do. So if I ever do it to you guys, that's me being like, yeah, thanks for Got nothing, it. you dickhead. Yeah. Well, but, I always um, thought that was your Marvel. good talk. Yeah, yeah Marvel. Yeah, to Ooh. Marvel. To bring it back to Marvel. Yeah, uh, anyone see the Marvel demo? Yeah. 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 Again, with the alternative version as well. As well which, oh, oh man. Crash. Can Start I just say, uh, it was off-putting. It looked really? too real. It was off-putting. I didn't like it. Yeah. Are you talking okay. about the scene at the end on the bridge where yes. they're shouting at each other? Yeah, that was super yeah, off-putting for me. I think the rest of it was cool. Visually, a marvel. I think seeing that, it was a little bit too real for me. That it was just off-putting. I think it's that's the easiest way to put it. In what, in, what do you mean, in what regard was it off-putting for you? How real it was. Is that not what we want in our games, though? No. Oh, okay. I, I mean, I don't want full. I don't want. Full, yeah, for me, it was too real. I don't want that full realism in a game. I don't want to feel like I'm watching like a legit movie in a game. And for me, it was a little bit too close to that, which is a huge shout out to that, to the software and the way that looked and all that stuff. Right. Uh, just for me personally, it was like a little bit too much. I disagree. I was blown away by it, obviously. And a little bit sad that they preempted that by saying, oh, we've taken the Black Panther's helmet off for this scene so you can see how good this tech is. And then I was like, well, I don't want to play your game with the Black Panther helmet on because I want to see this you guy. See it. The, I can't yeah. remember the guy's name, um, but he's in The Walking Dead and he does like loads of um, voice work for like DC cartoons and stuff as well. Um, I believe this is the first game he's ever been in. But fucking hell, he is phenomenal. And that's I haven't seen this by the way, just so everyone's aware. All. I so I saw the trailer, I saw like the beginning of the trailer and was like, I don't really care about this game. I'm not gonna watch this right now. And then yeah, everyone was going crazy about it on Twitter. I was like, oh crap, I should have watched this. So I haven't, I haven't <laughs> so, watched it. But um yeah. yeah. The trailer itself is gorgeous. The the Unreal like presentation, um what? Well, well, like I'm, so, I'm, not, I'm sorry i'm not laughing at you i'm laughing it's, the my, fucking fault. it's my fault well i say it's my fault my computer just like everything went dark and then came back <laughs> oh, okay i'm sorry i'm really sorry we'll matt just fucking, it was matt's face like <laughs> you, but you know what you're meant to do in those situations just ignore us or, not mm. you matt i'm talking to despawn oh, just okay. ignore us we're idiots yeah that's <laughs> true right, you are idiots no but yeah i mean oh, well, Black Panther. Okay. Marvel, Black Panther. The trailer itself <laughs> looks gorgeous. Love the tech. Yeah. The breakdown of what they're doing with like real time, uh, like 
telemetry and stuff like they keep talking about like now with the new with unreal 5 like the polygon system that they're using um it is insane like I, they were showed a bit where they like they were took a, a scene of like a car parked at a checkpoint with the light shining at night uh, and there was like a little bit of snow and they were like all right well what we can do is we can turn off the lights turns off the lights it changes the entire lighting of the scene we can also add add more snow or less snow and it basically looked like a slider that like the way that the snow yeah. built up on uh objects uh, and then we can change tire tracks. We can change the weather, and they were doing it all real time. Nuts. It is just wild to see what they are doing with this tech. And it, this is the kind of stuff that excites me, like seeing how people are using this tech. And if it makes it this easy to design, like love, I'm not saying it's easy, but like oh, if I it know makes it, if it easy lowers, enough. if it lowers the barrier to be able to like create the techno, like create the creative side of it. Of like, all right, we want to create a world where it's like a snow-based uh, vista, uh, and we could yep. do all this real time without having to program every little element. They could just get on with creating the stories that they want to make, and this is what excites me the most about it. And yeah, highly recommend if you've not gone and watched this, go watch it, even if it's just for this bit, for the Marvel yeah. bit. But there's like a couple of things that they've shown, and yeah, it is so cool. Interesting. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So you excited for that game now, or not really? I was already excited for it. Like um, Amy Hennig, single player, <laughs> Christ, action game. Like, no, nah, fuck no, that. Nah. No. I didn't say anything. I just shook my head. <laughs> so, do we know what type of game it is yet? Uh, single player, uh, uh, action adventure game. Basically, action adventure. Okay. Amy Hennig's okay. wheelhouse. Like, Where well, you play as Cap you and play as, Black Panther. You play as Cap, Black Panther, two other characters as well. So there's oh, four yeah, characters the two, in total. The two, yeah. yeah. The yeah. problem I have is I'm just so over Marvel at this moment in time. Where like anything I, Marvel related, I'm like, oh, I don't care. I always think the same thing, and then a trailer comes out, and I get like a giddy fucking school child, mm -hmm. like like this, right? Like and like I know Deadpool three, we will get a trailer for that like soon, right? And and I'll get giddy again. We already had a trailer. So, just how we had to try it for that. I mean, they'll do another one. Like, all the marketing oh, yeah. that Ryan Reynolds will do for that film will be insane, oh. right? So, like... Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, okay. I'm all about it. I'm a hypocrite. Yeah. Yes, you are. Marvel, Marvel sucks. Yes, you are. Until it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Boys, that's all we got time for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of My Xbox and Me. Uh, let's plug, 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 and get ourselves out of here. Crash, plug me something that isn't boring. That isn't boring. Uh, uh, I, I just got. got a, I just, <laughs> we need to go back to doing the uh, the keywords at the end of the show, so we're going to start it again this week. Because there's no way I think about this portion of the episode and think there's no way anyone makes it to this point, right? Oh, secret like, word. Seriously, oh, secret word. Yeah, like, yeah like, secret word. Who, yeah. who gets to the plug 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 point? And goes, oh, they're going to yeah, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Yeah, like who, does there's it, no you know? way anyone makes it this far, mm. surely. Well, so if you something have exciting. something exciting, uh, why don't you tweet us something exciting? If you've made it this far, tweet us something exciting. Okay, all right, yeah. You're gonna do that you go. however you want. On the Discord okay. tab, something exciting. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Okay, all right, something yeah. exciting. Interesting. What are you guys plug, Crash? Come on, give me something. Uh, what day are we doing the 24 hours? The 24, 24 hours? 12 hours. 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 12 27th of April, uh, on the My Xbox and Me YouTube page, Twitch page, we will be live for 12 hours doing a whole bunch of forfeits and other stuff. It'll be a very fun time. Um, I don't know if we've released anything that we're going to be playing or doing yet. We so, Playful Company will be playing. Playful Company. There you go. Ooh, That's we? the one thing. Yeah. I love how Matt doesn't know anything. I got to buy all those no beans and stuff, haven't I? Matt, <laughs> Matt's included beans. on everything. Are you coming to London oh again? Why? Are you coming to London again before uh, the 27th? Maybe. If you maybe do, I'm going to just give you, give you something. Stop talking about things that people don't know about yet, you idiot. God damn it. What? Anyway, we're good to plug. Future Game Show? Yeah, go watch the showcase. Look, we do a showcase. We do three of them a year. The next one will be in June now, but you can go back and watch Thursday's Future Games Spring Showcase hosted by Ben Starr, who plays Clive in Final Fantasy 16, and Samantha Bayard, who plays Carlac in Baldur's Gate 3. They 
caused a lot of chaos and just had a laugh with it and we love him for it uh there was also the first official post show expansion pack after mm. that i produced um what's question that? notice i wasn't invited to be on that show hmm yeah strange noticed noticed what, am I irrelevant? And you're you're on the, the list. Point? I'm on the list. I'm on the list. See what happens. We'll see what happens. Jesus Christ. Good God. But I you know, know who was on that expansion pack? <laughs> God, who was it? Doug Cockle, who plays Geralt of Rivia in the Witcher oh, games. Oh, sorry. I haven't got you know, that much. fix. Okay, when you're looking at those two options, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll be 100% honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, I'm wait, also a piss fix. I was going to make the wrong choice. <laughs> What? So, do, do, do you know who I am, bro? Do you know in the UK I was on Game Master. You, bro, True. I won a golden joystick crash. True. I don't know what that is. The question is, oh, are you, you going to tell me you've won a golden joystick? Yeah. Are you going to turn crash. up on the expansion pack with the golden joystick? Uh, he, oh, if, if he doesn't. <laughs> Could you imagine? If he's ever on it. He doesn't come with it in hand. <laughs> Could you imagine? That's just, I just turned up with me like, yeah, you know who I am. You know who I am as I walk around. <laughs> no introduction, no nothing. You just. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, it was. A good, I, I did see a little bit of the, the. I didn't see the showcase. I'm not going to lie. But, um, which is crazy enough, we didn't put that as topic of the show this week either. Like, God. Right, we, disrespected, we disrespected them bad. We, we, no, look, we're getting bigger and bigger like, announcements all the time, right? Like, the, the, you are. Probably, one of the biggest announcements we got this time was the release date for Still Wakes the Deep, mm -hmm. um, which Can't obviously wait. is coming to Game Pass June 18th. Yes. That's huge. We got to go chat to the Chinese room. Um, I went down to their studio in Bournemouth and saw what they were doing with that, and that's really exciting. Um, you know, we got Tales of Iron 2 announcement and stuff as well. You know, I wasn't aware of that game before, I'll be honest with you, but the fans for that game were fucking excited for Tales of Iron 2, so good on nice. that. Nice. Um, yeah, we're getting more and more big stuff all the time, and the hosts are always great. So please do go check out the future games. Showcase extended developer interviews as well next week. Chat to Moon Studios more about No Rest for the Wicked. So if you're into that game, keep an eye on the channel next week. Ooh. Um, and more stuff with that. Very excited for that one. What are you plugging? Uh, I am going to plug the boring one. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash my Xbox and me. Uh, YouTube.com my Xbox and me. Uh, also, my Twitter. Come hang out with me. I post too much, but you know, I just like hanging out with people. So, you know, come come abuse my tweets and look at my bald like head. It. See, Fix, here's what might have happened, right? You said, right, let's plug, plug, plug and get ourselves out of here. Who's going to stick around for the plug, plug, plug? Probably what happened is somebody looked at their phone and just went, oh, there's another 15 minutes of this podcast left, even though they're mm -hmm. talking about wrapping it up. <laughs> Maybe I should stick around. Maybe All part of the plan, mate. All part of the plan. Uh, I see, I see, I see. Um, what yeah, about uh, you? Uh, do you know, I haven't really got much going on right now. Um, come over to, do you know what? Come over and check me out over on Ubisoft. Ubisoft.com. No, twitch.tv slash Ubisoft. Um, <laughs> we did, um, what did I stream the other day? I streamed Riders Republic, mm -hmm. which... I have a great time when I play that game. The hours, I'll, I'll be honest, like obviously one of those games that probably people don't think about often and um, yeah, I guess hashtag add all that bullshit, right? Like, um, but I really have a good time when I play Riders Republic. The community is so nice as well and we just all have a good time and uh, yeah, I hit a lot of polls. So yeah, if you enjoy watching me play Ubisoft titles like I do, um, yes, don't be making weird jokes. I know. I'm polls. Relax, you two. Relax. I was going to say, I, I didn't know they introduced pole dancing to Riders Rubble. Yeah, they do what I play, mate. Trust Season me. 10, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, come over, check me out. Also, you already know, patreon.com slash mcfix. So help us keep the lights on. Until next time, love you. Leave you. See you later. Good boys. The secret word is banana. Oh, no.